So I've got some Marvel Legends figures beside me that are in two different sizes. Over here, you got your standard size figures. If you are a collector, you probably have some figures just like this in your collection. But over here, we have some tiny figures that you probably haven't seen before. That's because I made them myself with some help from a 3D scanner. If you stick around, I'll show you exactly how I built them. Okay, so these miniature Marvel Legends were made by using a combination of 3D scanning and 3D printing technology. A few months ago, I got this device, which is called the Revopoint Pop Scanner, and basically it allows you to capture an object and generate a 3D model of it, which you can later 3D print. If you follow me on social media, you may have seen me use this device to scan all kinds of stuff like boots, Funko Pops, and vintage toys. But today we'll be scanning these Marvel Legends action figures. Now since I'm a toy photographer myself, I'm always creating little scenes with my action figures. I enjoy putting characters in various scenarios, and sometimes I'll make scenes like this where my action figures are playing with toys of their own, and these miniature figures would be great for a scene like that. Okay, so we're starting the 3D scanning process. We've got the figure set up on this rotating turntable, and as the object rotates, this scanner will capture the information and save it onto my computer using some included software. Now, if you're scanning a bright colored object, you shouldn't have any problems, but this Spider-Man has some very dark sections on it, especially on the back here, and you'll notice that the software is not picking up those sections. That's because the scanner has trouble capturing things that are dark, reflective, or transparent. So we're gonna have to work around that issue, and we can do that by using some scanning spray. This is the A-Sub Blue spray can, which contains a temporary spray that will make an object lighter in color, which will allow it to be captured by the scanner. And the really cool thing is that the spray will eventually evaporate after a few hours, so it won't permanently change the color of your object. And you can see here that after the figure was sprayed, the scanner does a much better job of capturing the object. I then scanned my beast figure as well, and next we'll be able to export the 3D models of both figures. But before we do that, it's time for the question of the day. If you had a 3D scanner, what kinds of objects would you scan? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Okay, so I'm looking at the 3D models that we generated here, and although they aren't super detailed, they did capture the essence of the figure. Now, if you look closely at the models, you'll see little sections like this that need to be cleaned up, and you can fix those things in a program like Mesh Mixer just to make the models a little bit nicer. And now that we have the final 3D models, I'll scale them down and generate some 3D printing files with my slicing program called Cura. I'll then copy the files over to my 3D printer to start the printing process. I'm currently using the Creality Ender 3 Pro, but I'm hoping to eventually get a resin printer which would make the prints even smoother. These figures were initially printed at 24% scale, but I thought they were a little bit large at that size, so I decided to make them a little bit smaller, and I shrunk them down to 17% scale, which I'm pretty happy with. After spraying a quick layer of primer on the miniatures, I began to paint them. Now I'm not an expert miniature painter by any means, so please forgive my paint job. It's really challenging to paint stuff that's so small, but I tried my best. This is what I came up with, and you'll see that I also made some miniature accessories as well. Now the last step is to make some miniature boxes. I'll start by unfolding the original boxes, and then I'll scan them into my computer. And once the images have been scanned, I'll clean them up in Photoshop to make some printable templates. I'll print them out onto matte photo paper, and then I'll cut them out and fold them back together. For the display window on the front of the box, I just found some scrap plastic packaging from some old toys, and I cut that up and glued it to the boxes. And then I put the figures inside with the accessories. And these are the finished miniature Marvel Legends figures.
Now, if you don't have a 3D scanner yourself, you can still make 3D models of objects by using a technique called photogrammetry, where you basically just take photos of an object with your camera. And I explained that technique in this video right here, where I made a miniature version of a NECA Ninja Turtles figure. Till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.